Hey everybody, today we're going to make steel from iron, this iron. This is some round bits of iron I bought on eBay. And we're going to spark test it, so yeah, it's definitely iron or iron-like. Sparse sparks that don't flower or burst. That's what we want to see. Remember, if we had more carbon, there'd be more sparks and they'd be bursty. We're going to hammer it flat and then we'll uh, cut it up and put it in our crucible or our metal container in this case and then add our carbon source, which in this case is going to be Tums. So remember the carburization process where we add carbon to iron to make, you know, wrought iron, steel, and then cast iron. I made a video not long ago of carburizing with sugar. We, we took some knife planks and uh, put them in sugar with various heating methods and took the carbon out of the sugar and put it into the steel. And you can use different salts to catalyze this reaction. Uh, sodium carbonate, which is made from baking powder, uh, potassium carbonate, calcium carbonate, and then some toxic salts that are used in industry. And you basically combine those with a carbon source like charcoal or wood or bone or leather. Uh, put it in a case or container of some court sort, heat it up, and the carbon will diffuse into the steel. This is a cementation furnace that they used in England uh, a long time ago to make some crucible steel or blister steel that's refined into sheer steel to make knives. But we're going to run into some problems because this iron is not so good. You can see all those cracks running longitudinally and along the sides and edges and the ends. I don't know what happened. I mean, I read about this phenomenon called cold short iron online. You know, I guess some impurities like phosphorus and sulfur made their way into a lot of iron and, and the iron tended to be brittle or unusable in some cases. So at any rate, we found this on eBay. It's pure iron. Uh, unless it's pure lead. I don't know. No, it's probably pure iron. Um, and so that'll take that mystery out of the equation. We're just dealing with iron. No alloys or funkiness to interfere with our uh, experiment. And one for me, and 28 for pseudoscience. Making Gallagher proud. There's not a lot of solid instruction for making blister steel, um, and there's some for case hardening. I don't know whether to seal up this container or not. I, I put uh, a Tums in the forge earlier and expanded it about three times its normal size, and there's already air in here in addition because those are sort of some big crumbles. Air expands, I think, up to 30 times at the temperature we're using. So that is to say I don't want to really make a bomb, so I'm probably going to weld this a little bit loose and uh, let some of the gas escape and the air escape and hopefully oxygen will burn up inside the forge and, and we won't have a problem with oxygen significant amounts of oxygen getting into the container and messing with our carburization process I mean you can see just from the welding how much uh, heat and gas is made So, as I was mentioning, not a lot of good instruction on making blister steel around, which is sort of what I, what I want to make, but depending on what you're using, you know, and if you're using the oven or the forge, people say a couple hours at 2100 degrees, four hours at, you know, 1800 degrees. In the olden times, uh, you know, in Sheffield, they would leave it in there for four or five days at uh, 1500 degrees in a little crucible, and you get this blistery steel so I'm hoping that we've done something like this. This this stayed in the forge probably it's probably close to 1800 1900 degrees for about 50 minutes. It doesn't look like that was long enough. I don't I don't see a lot of blistering on this. I'm a little bit trigger shy or gun shy. I've made uh, cast iron on accident a couple times, so I didn't want to leave it in there too long. Whoa! Nice!
<laughs> yeah, man, we did it. We carburized this iron with uh, Tums. So why does Tums work? Well, Tums has calcium carbonate in it, right? It's, uh, it's a main ingredient, which is a salt that helps along carburization. And also has cornstarch or dextrose, depending on what type you get, which is uh, carbon rich. It's carbohydrate. So it worked. It's well over uh, 60, 65 HRC when quenched in water, so that's pretty sweet. So I said we didn't make blister steel, but what is that? Are those early blisters on the container? Is that from the uh, weld? Some spatter from the weld? I don't know. It's probably from the welding. But here's our container material at baseline mild steel obviously here's the container we used for carburization ah. so that's sort of medium carbon steel sparking we're gonna quench it in water You know, it, it gets to uh, about 60, high 50s HRC with these hardness files. So it's definitely probably a, a medium, medium-ish carbon steel. Maybe on the low side, 1045 or something. So all right, I can see we didn't make any blister steel, but we, man, we carburized steel with Tums, dude. That's freaking sweet. I think you all know what comes next. I'll see you next time.